So good morning. Uh, later this week, the order regarding transit Windsor is set to expire and the whole team here at City Hall has been considering how to respond given new information emerging frequently during this public health crisis. And while certainly no one is prepared at this point to declare victory, we have a long way to go before our city can return to those pre-pandemic conditions. But based on the available public health data regarding the slowing rate of increase of COVID-19 in our community and in our province, we will be taking the first steps in resuming transit service next week. Effective Monday, May 4th, Transit Windsor will operate on an enhanced Sunday schedule. That's gonna operate seven days per week. This modest level of service will allow for riders to get around town and we will monitor to determine when and if and how to further increase frequency of service. After several conversations with Dr. Ahmed and the Windsor-Essex County Health Unit, the City of Windsor asked for and received a detailed cleaning and sanitization protocol. Last week, those recommendations formed the basis of a very thoughtful and a very productive discussion with ATU Local 616, who represents the backbone of Transit Windsor operations. We are continuing our discussions with ATU and we anticipate being able to enter a memorandum agreement later this week. And I wanna thank the leadership at ATU uh, for coming to the table with some great ideas, some important questions, and to make sure that when we resume transit operations, it's as safe as possible for riders, but also for the drivers in our system. Following the best advice of international pu public health experts, we know the resumption of service needs to be slow and deliberate to make sure that we don't risk a second wave or drive local community spread of COVID-19. For that reason, the updated order limiting transit service to enhanced Sunday schedule will be, place, uh, will be in place rather until at least May 31st. We are going to continue to monitor the situation to ensure that this progressive step creates as little risk as possible. In a moment, I'm gonna ask Pat Delmar, our Executive Director of Transit Windsor to outline the additional steps that will be taking place to make sure that when we return to service next week, our fleet will be as safe as possible and take appropriate precautions to safeguard the health and well-being of our entire community. Also expiring uh, later this week, in fact, on April the 30th, will be the order which closed Devonshire and Tecumseh Malls. And while this order will not be extended, the province of Ontario has enacted strict guidelines regarding the types of merchants that are permitted to operate during this pandemic. Those regulations remain in effect and will determine which commercial operations within both malls will be permitted to open as of Friday, May 1st. I would like to highlight that Ontario continues to limit public gatherings to no more than five individuals and municipal bylaw staff will be monitoring both malls to ensure that we don't see folks congregating in those places. These tentative first steps that we are announcing today are only made possible because we came together as a community and we stayed apart for these past few weeks. And I wanna stress that while we are taking these steps, I strongly urge residents to continue to practice social distancing and self-isolation following the best advice of our public health officials. And even as we plan for these modest reopenings, this past weekend, the province of Ontario reminded us collectively that we still have a long way to go. Schools will remain shut to at least the end of May. Ontario provincial parks remain closed and municipal play structures are still off limits. And locally, sort of one of those indicia at the start of summer, the fireworks uh, display has also been canceled. Finally, as we all watch the daily numbers locally, regionally and nationally, I wanna thank the dedicated healthcare workers that are working so diligently behind the scenes and working to help save lives in our community. All of those nurses, those doctors, those personal support workers, emergency services, public health and social service workers, and all of those folks on the front lines who are working tirelessly to help us all and to help combat, combat this pandemic. They truly are the heroes in our community, each and every one of them. And before we take questions uh, from the media, I'd like to turn it over to Pat Delmore, the Executive Director of Transit Windsor, to provide a bit more detail. Pat. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as we, uh, as an administration, have been working to put together a plan to resume uh, public transit in the city of Windsor, uh, we sat down and we looked at what was the best way to transition back into the service. There is still a recognition that uh, public transit across the country is providing service for essential trips only. So our uh, initial plan is to begin with a Sunday service level, seven days a week, uh, with additional buses implemented throughout the system to assist in the ridership levels. 
recognizing that while on public transit, we still have to provide the social distancing uh, that is required with two meters uh, between, uh, between passengers. That is the one challenge that has been experienced right across the country is uh, recognizing and being able to maintain social distancing while on public transit. Uh, it's a real challenge to be able to uh, spread out passengers. We'll have signage on seats that indicate which seats uh, we ask passengers to not use. Uh, We're looking at what the actual total number of passengers on a bus uh, will be allowed to be. Uh, throughout the transit industry currently, that number is between uh, 10 and 15. And keeping in mind that we've got about 40 seats on every bus. So we will be uh, moving substantially less passengers and having that ability to do that uh, with, with less uh, buses as well. Um, we will provide some additional buses throughout the system. So for example, our two main lines, the Transway 1C and the Crosstown 2, for example, on a Sunday, they only run every 40 minutes. We will be providing a bus every 20 minutes with also the ability to uh, provide additional buses to cut in once a driver calls in and reports that he's at the maximum number of passengers uh, allowed on the bus at any given point. Uh, it will be a struggle and it will be a challenge for us as well to manage this. Uh, we are asking the public to please remember that these are for essential trips only. Uh, we recognize the importance of public transit in our community and there are people that do need our buses to get to and from work, to and from some groceries, uh, getting essential uh, travel in and we are asking people if, it, if you are making a non-essential trip you could very well be uh, denying an, a passenger who does need to get to work that trip and we will likely bypass people along, along the routes as we travel through the city. We'll be doing our best to add in additional buses wherever possible but knowing how many people are uh, waiting for a bus at any given point uh, is virtually impossible. So we're gonna do our best and we ask the community to be with us and, and uh, support, support us as we try to work through this over the coming weeks. Okay, thank you, Pat. Thank you. Windsor Star. Questions from the Windsor Star? Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> could I ask, uh, Pat, are the, are the same sort of um, rules applying in terms of people boarding from the back, um, those sort of issues? And will there also, um, will there just be the driver on the bus or would there be other staff on the bus sort of uh, being able to enforce these sort of things? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, we will be uh, limiting the number of passengers on the bus. It will only be the driver. Uh, and we have uh, we had a, a very good healthy discussion with the medical officer of health with regards to the challenges that transit right across the country is having in, in enforcing the numbers. Uh, we'll be asking our drivers to, uh, you know, to monitor, call in when they get to the level and then they would roll up uh, a sign, our signage that says out of service and will not pick up additional riders until they uh, go below the, the specified number of passengers on the bus. And, uh, and then they, uh, we cut in an additional bus wherever possible uh, when we have them uh, free to, to cut in and p start picking up where that driver uh, stopped uh, picking up. We will continue to be boarding from the back door. And uh, there is a taped off section at the front uh, where passengers are asked not to go up. Uh, the only passengers that will be allowed in that front area uh, are passengers with mobility issues or a passenger in a wheelchair. And so Brian, you ask, a, let me just jump in, you ask a really important question and there was a, a media report last week uh, in the city of London, Ontario, where there were some complaints about overcrowding. Uh, a lot of this, just out of necessity, will be self-governing. Uh, and so the driver will not be, you know, it, being heavy on the bus and enforcing whether there's 10 or 12 people. Uh, this has to be self-governed uh, in a very responsible way. And so after a complaint in the City of London last week, uh, the following day, there was, I understand it, some enforcement undertaken by the Medical Officer of Health and that team in the City of London uh, to, to look at uh, 
the number of folks there and the overcrowding on the bus. So uh, the medical officer's he officer of health, and I'm sure his team here locally will be doing the same type of monitoring. Uh, but let me underscore, and everyone who's on the call or watching this today, our health unit has put the protocols and recommendations that they made to Transit Windsor for the operation of the system on their website. So whether you're taking, and that also includes a taxi or an Uber or rideshare, as well as transit, you can look at the protocols that they've given us. And the protocols for transit are broken down into tr things that the transit operator should consider, but also what the riders need to consider. And there are specific responsibilities for the rider, and I will underscore, although we're st talking about and going to start a uh, very limited Sunday service on May the 4th, one of the recommendations from the Medical Officer of Health locally is that people who ride the bus consider other forms of transportation. Consider walking and riding a bike is what specifically says. Some have made other arrangements already in the last month and I appreciate there's been some difficulty uh, that this suspension has caused to folks but they found other ways to move around and we would still, notwithstanding the fact that we're starting the service, we would still recommend at this time that they use other forms of transportation to the extent that they can. Follow up from Windsor Star. Uh, yeah, could you just also tell me um, how often the buses are going to be sort of cleaned and disinfected, that sort of thing? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, we do have a very deep nightly cleaning that has been taking place even prior uh, to the suspension of transit, um, uh, full disinfectant of the of the bus, and that's consistently what's happening uh, uh, across uh, across the province and across Ontario or across Canada. Uh, the other aspect that our medical officer of health had requested is that we do end of line cleaning, so we will be implementing uh, a, a, a disinfecting of the of the vehicle uh, at uh, in specific intervals throughout the day at the end of the line uh, a number of times a day. They'll be doing all the high touch points, including stanchions, handrails, um, the, the cord for the bell, uh, those areas that are, that are high touch uh, by our passengers. So they'll be done every few hours. Uh, is the previous arrangement uh, that seemed to fall through involving QP members doing that, is, is, is it going to be ATU members doing that or QP members? It will be ATU. Okay. CBC next, please. Uh, hey there. Um, we're still seeing the number of cases rise. We're still seeing the number of people who are unfortunately dying because of this virus rise uh, locally in Windsor, Essex. So why is this change? Uh, what's changed in your review of this, Mayor, uh, to make this come back? Yeah, I can touch on that uh, on behalf of the Mayor. Uh, one of the aspects of transit has been our very close-knit uh, industry communication. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be on conference calls, uh, surveys with, with all of my transit colleagues right across the country, sometimes daily, about the issues that are being uh, dealt with and addressed uh, across all municipalities. And we have... Uh, very strongly looked at all of the recommendations that each municipality has addressed those issues with and by putting them into place here in Windsor uh, we are uh, able to provide a much safer environment for our, our staff a safer environment for the riders because of all of the implementation of uh, different programs and protocols put in place right across the country follow up from CBC. I'm just wondering if the mayor would like to respond. Again, this is a decision that you made, Mr. Nilkins. Uh, what changed in the last week that we're still seeing the number of cases rise? So a, a couple things, Chris. And, and first off, let me say that I made the very difficult decision to, spe to suspend operations uh, out of the gate because we were at a point where we were trying to save lives. We were trying to control the community transmission of what has become a very deadly virus. And let's talk about, let's say that 40 people in our community have died because of this. So this is a very serious issue. And I had to look at everything that was going on and look at all of the, all of the points of our operation to decide whether or not or how 
I getting up in the morning, making these decisions about saving lives, what could I do so that at the end of the day, I could put my own head on the pillow and say that I did everything I could. And so I took the step that I felt that was best for the community, suspended operations, and we issued an order. And with the, before the end of that first order, I asked our administrative team here at the city for recommendations. I asked them to go back, look at what was going on across the country, across the border, in the province of Ontario, and what do they recommend moving forward. And Mr. Delmore, Mr. Colucci uh, came back to me recommending that we continue to suspend operations uh, at Transit Windsor. And so I took that advice and we issued another order which extended uh, the closure and all of that. And again, let me just say, no mayor, no premier, no prime minister ever wants to go out and make life harder for the residents of their city. This is not political for me. The political move, if I wanted to play it, in my mind would have been left to left the system open and let people continue to use this. I made the hard decision, which I felt was right for the community. And now as we look at where we are, Dr. Ahmed, uh, certainly we're not out of the woods, but Dr. Ahmed has indicated that we're in a stable position. We know being in a stable position as a region, we know that there is also a period of time that it will take to ramp up service. So it's not like uh, I can make a decision and have transit started tomorrow. It takes a period of time to schedule, to get everything prepared, to get all the operators back, to implement the, the protocols uh, that will be implemented. And so there is now enough time for us to do that. Keeping in pace, and I, I, I can't prejudge what our Premier is going to say at 1 or 1.30 today, but I have to look at our largest employer as well, and the most recent information we have from FCA is that they're intending on resuming operations as of May the 4th. Uh, and so I need to look at all of the inputs, all of the factors that are coming in, uh, and try and do what is best with balancing all of the competing interests that are here, uh, the fundamental one being the public health and safety of our community. And so notwithstanding the fact that we are going to start a, an enhanced Sunday service on May the 4th, let me underscore once again, if you don't have to take transit, don't. Do not take it unless it's an absolutely essential trip. I, if I had my grandmother living in a long-term care home right now, I would not want the PSW that is going to take care of my grandmother taking public transit and going in to take care of those folks. I just wouldn't want that. So please, if you don't have to take it, if those folks don't have to take it and they've made other arrangements and many employers have stepped up to the plate and helped their employees with other arrangements, please keep those in place. Let me go back to again to Dr. Ahmed's memo where for the riders, he underscores again that if you don't need to take transit, consider why some of the should do that. Do that. So please don't take transit unless it's an essential trip. Uh, but if it is, if you do have an essential need on May the 4th on a Sunday enhanced schedule, we are going to start the resumption of transit uh, and we will look at what happens with that resumption and take appropriate uh, measures as needed through the month of May. CBC, one more. Uh, and yes, it, was that call when you had put out to say, you know, do you think transit should come back online? Uh, it was shut down, I believe, a month ago. Um, so within the last time, you've had recommendations not to continue with service, and now the recommendations to continue with service. Are, are you happy with the, the speed of which this is taken? Uh, I, I think this has been appropriate. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, we, in our discussions early on, Dr. Ahmed committed to getting the uh, sanitizing protocols uh, in place and over to us. Uh, I took a short period of time to do that, recognizing that he and his team were also very busy. Uh, and so we got those. We were able to have a, uh, many thorough conversations with Dr. Ahmed and his team about those protocols and, and work through many of the challenges uh, that are operationally related to each item. We've done that. We believe we're on a path now that we think uh, is balanced, it's fair and reasonable, and provides safety for the drivers of the system who are a, a paramount concern uh, for the city, but also to the riders who are of equally uh, a paramount concern to us. We want to make sure everyone's safe. And because there's a nature of this that is self-governing, uh, you know, we need people to not be afraid, not be afraid if the bus is full, to wait for the next one. And believe me, if the bus is full, the driver will have called in 
uh, reinforcement that will be on standby, as Mr. Delmore explained, and we will, we will get an additional bus out on the road as quickly as possible. Like every decision we have made uh, in this over the course of this pandemic, this is not perfect. There will be some element of imperfection here that we will have to work through and address as we go along. We believe starting with this enhanced Sunday service is the, the best step, the best first step, providing the least amount of risk to the drivers and the riders. And we will continue to evaluate every day in May as we move forward, looking at how, looking at and contemplating what the Premier says today at 1.30 and how he plans to reopen the economy, making sure that to the extent possible, we can be lockstep uh, with that, provided we can keep uh, safety for drivers and riders. CTV, please. I just wanted to circle back to the kind of what has changed uh, question. Um, what, you know, why couldn't this uh, enhanced Sunday service have been implemented at, at the end of March when the order was made? From a, uh, the perspective of, of what we were able to provide at the time for our operators, uh, just like every other transit property and, and every other facility in our province, we were really struggling to get the proper uh, safety measures in place for our operators. It was difficult to find sanitizer that we could purchase, uh, disinfectant wipes, gloves or masks, for example. They just weren't available at that time. Uh, since that time, we've had the opportunity to, to investigate what's happening across, across the country with regards to providing uh, safety measures for our employees. Uh, and putting in protocols for our riders as well. So that has assisted us in, in being assured that we're gonna be providing uh, some of the safest measures we can for, for those that'll be using transit and our employees. So a follow up to that on, on the PPE front, uh, how well stocked are you? What, what kind of supply does the Transit Windsor have for its, uh, for its drivers? We have plenty of supply of, of sanitizer. Our, our operators were provided with a small individual uh, bottle that they will be able to refill at any of our uh, terminal locations, including our garage. Uh, we have the disinfectant wipes for the driver's area. We now have the protocol in place for the high touch uh, cleaning that will also be taking place throughout the day. Um, we have, we've got masks on order for our employees if they decide to choose to use that. It, it's not a required uh, PPE as uh, when we're in the same position with, uh, with gloves uh, if they so choose. And, and if I can, one for the mayor as well. You, you talked about how uh, you don't plan to extend the, the order concerning the malls. Um, does that mean they're open? What, what, what you know, position does that put us in? Because I think when people hear that, they're gonna say, oh, so I can, I can jump over to you know, to Old Navy. Yeah, so when I made the decision, uh, the initial order and the initial decision to uh, to close Devonshire and Tecumseh Malls, uh, the province had not yet fully enacted the current essential workplace uh, regulation that's in place. Uh, and so that's that provincial uh, regulation clearly identifies the types of businesses that are allowed to be open. Uh, and I think if you look at the vast majority of stores uh, that exist inside Devonshire Mall or Tecumseh Mall, uh, the vast majority as of this very moment would not be allowed to reopen even if I, you know, even when the order expires. Uh, and so we just felt that there was no need for the city to continue to take action on that front because the provincial regulation uh, is in place that provides the, uh, the, uh, the pathway uh, for stores at that location. To your direct question about whether that means Tecumseh Mall and Devonshire Mall will open. That is only a question that the mall operators uh, can answer. Uh, but at the end of the day, there is still a requirement of no more than five people gathering in a public place. Uh, and so our bylaw officers would continue to uh, take proper enforcement uh, with respect to that. Thank you. Blackburn, please. Uh, yeah, do you have an idea how many drivers will be calling off from from layoff? We're still working through that process uh, today and meeting with uh, those pieces. And I think we're, you know, we've had very good uh, cooperation around the table thus far. And I expect that we'll be having a, uh, we'll be able to sign a memorandum of agreement later this week. AM 800. The cost to board the bus, will it be free given the fact that there's will be boarding at the back? 
so the uh, across across Canada, uh, currently all systems are allowing the rear boarding, which means for most of us that there is no fare box at the back uh, at the back of the door. Uh, some of the systems do have uh, a reader at the back. Ours do not, so the fares will continue to be waived at this time. Uh, and uh, you know, we look forward to the day where we can get back to uh, a normal transit system and uh, uh, full service levels. But I think we've got a little bit, a little bit of time before we can get to that point. Okay. And secondly, you mentioned that there will be some seats that will have signs on them saying you can't sit here. Keep physical distancing in mind. If those signs are removed, whose responsibility is it to enforce the social distancing on the bus? Will it be the driver? We're going to continue throughout the day. Uh, the way we're putting the signage on, uh, they will be tied on very tightly. Uh, it's it laminated. It's not just a piece of paper stuck on a seat. Uh, we will also have staff that are going to be doing some of the cleaning. Uh, we'll also be monitoring that throughout the day as well. So if someone removed one in, in some way, uh, it will be replaced throughout the day. Thank you. Windsor Star. Anything further? Uh, not for me, thanks. CBC? Uh, just a transit Windsor there. Uh, you replied to uh, Delmore to one of the uh, questions there about what was required and talked about PPE and hand sanitizer and how it's something that other transit uh, operations are dealing with. How come Transit Windsor is the only place uh, in a, a large city in, in Ontario that had to, that couldn't get that access to restart again. I guess, what are your thoughts on being the only transit system that have to shut down? Well, with regards to the PPE, we were not the only ones that were struggling uh, to provide PPE. Uh, we were all in that boat. Uh, during uh, some of the early weeks, uh, as we well know that everywhere was, was struggling to get hand sanitizer. You couldn't find it anywhere. Personal uh, shoppers couldn't find it. So it was, it was an across the country issue that everyone was experiencing and it was one that Windsor experienced as well. And, and just to, to run the service there um, but not be able to offer it during a pandemic which has been referred to by some users as essential. Uh, how does it feel now being able to offer the service but why couldn't or, or how did it feel to not be able to offer the service during that pandemic? We're a community that really takes pride in our transit system. You know, we wanted, we wanted to be able to provide the, uh, the, the best levels of service right across uh, the, the community that we could, and we respected the mayor's decision at the time. CTV? I'm, I'm good. Blackburn? I'm good. AM800? I'm good, thank you. Anybody else with anything? Uh, just another CBC follow-up here, sorry. Uh, boarding from the back, but keeping two meters of distancing in, as far as space, is, is this something that the bus driver themselves will have to essentially police while on board? Yeah, no, uh, thank you for that question. No, we uh, made it very clear, uh, as had every transit system across the country, it is the biggest struggle that everybody is encountering. Is, is and it is the requirement, as you, if you have the opportunity to read uh, the, uh, the medical officer of health comments, uh, within the, uh, the passengers' requirements, uh, you know, their, their, their uh, responsibility is to ensure their knowledge there is not. One of the benefits having closed it early. I would really recommend everyone on the phone, to the extent you can, uh, really direct the public to look at the protocols that Dr. Ahmed has put in place. They're on the Essex County, Windsor Essex County Health Unit website. Uh, and they really spell out some very, I mean, most of them I think are common sense, but uh, to the extent that people want sort of the guidelines, uh, they are there in black and white in terms of rider's behavior, in terms of operator's responsibilities. And I think from a rider's perspective, there's a lot of good information there that will uh, give people some ideas on how to further protect their health and safety if they're going to use the transit system. Thank you. Hi. 
Hi, I have a last question. How many uh, people would be able to enter in each uh, bus, please? We're still just finalizing that number today. Uh, just at 8 a.m. this morning, I was out on one of the buses myself uh, going over some of the different configurations that we were looking at. So that number will likely be finalized uh, later today. In most, cities, in most cities across Canada, that number has been between 10 and 15. Thank you. Anybody else for final question? Okay, thank you everyone. Thank Have you. A great